Good morning from New York. We're here with um, the U.S. Women's, women's Eight rowing team who just came back from Rio with a gold medal. So let's meet them. Hi, guys. I'm Caitlin Snyder, and I'm the coxswain. Hey, I'm Amanda Elmore. I was the stroke seat. Amanda Polk. I was three seat, part of the engine room. Uh, I'm Emily Regan, and I was the bow seat, so I got to cross the finish line first. <laughs> And I'm Carrie Simmons, and I was in two seat, which sits right in front of her. So I crossed the finish line second. So I have to ask you, you just said you're the engine room. What does that mean? So there are actually um, specific positions in the boat. Um, the engine room are the middle four of the eight, where all they focus on is just pure power. Um, we follow our stroke and seven seat, and then we um, basically just try to forge the boat forward as hard as we can. And our two seat and one bow, um, they help to set the boat up for us as we can just keep going to work. So you guys have been undefeated since 2006, which is pretty unreal. What did it feel like winning that Olympic gold? For most of you, it was the first time you were at the Olympics, right? What did that feel like? Oh, sorry, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't. None of us were actually in the boat for all those 11 wins. So I think for me personally, um, it was really cool to win because it meant that. Every time I failed and didn't make the boat, um, it, it was all worth it. And it really, maybe those failures were actually successes because I learned something from them. How did you feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so 11 wins of the U.S. Women's 8, that's amazing. And as she said, we weren't in it every time. But we're, like, really proud to represent those other women and continue that streak. And... We ha felt a lot of pressure to continue that streak, but we remembered that it was just another race and came together as a boat. So we're really happy that we won this one. I'll add to that. I was in six of those titles, and I can honestly say that each boat has its special dynamic, and this Olympic boat is definitely part of uh, very close to my heart, um, especially because I was in London as an alternate and then I came back and met these awesome ladies and it was just a joy and, and celebrating and, and sharing this experience with them. So how did you guys celebrate? What was the Athletes Village like and how did you guys celebrate? Uh, well the Athlete Village is actually probably tamer than people think. Um, there's still people competing through the second week so people are really respectful. Everyone's an athlete and would want people to be respectful of them if they were competing. Uh, for me personally, I went to so many different sports events. I went to uh, like beach volleyball, track and field, water polo, rhythmic gymnastics, and gymnastics and diving. And it just, being able to go to everything is, I think, makes the Olympics experience pretty special. And I mean, we did get to go out and have a good time and celebrate out. But um, I think my favorite part was going to all the events. <laughs> So what events were your guys' favorites to watch? And, like, did you meet anyone who you're a big fan of or you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm, like, meeting this person. I'm such a big fan. You're nodding your head, so. <laughs> well, so we went to uh, the women's pre pre preliminary 10-meter uh, dive, and we actually got to watch with a woman who's on the diving team in synchro diving. So it was, like, very cool. Her name is Amy, so hi, Amy. <laughs> we loved you. Um, it was just very cool to get her take on all of the dives because I don't know really anything about the sport. It was magnificent to watch, even knowing nothing, but it was really, really cool to have Amy there kind of explaining the different moves and the different dives, so it was pretty special. Um, well, I really enjoyed track and field. That was a really cool event to be a part of on this side where you're there and you're an athlete. But um, what I was really excited about was just being at the same Olympics as Carrie Walsh Jennings. Um, I grew up watching her as a kid, and her name's Carrie, and my name's Carrie, so I obviously liked her right away. But she's also very good at her sport. Um, so it was so cool to be at the same Olympics, uh, both as athletes this time. And unfortunately, I didn't get to watch her play live, but I did get to see beach volleyball. And the team I did see play was uh, the Brazilian men. 
actually Amanda Polk went with me and the home crowd for beach ball I mean I'm sure for any sport the home crowd is insane but it was really fun to be a part of it yeah yeah I went to some beach volleyball and it was insane the Brazilians like get so into it right yeah yeah they had the ring set up right overlooking the ocean the actual beach there yeah So do you guys, like, get to, like, hang out with the other athletes? Like, do you hang out with the other Americans who are there? Or are you kind of, like, on your own? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyone? Go ahead. Oh, oh, you got it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, so we're in the same building as all of the Team USA athletes, so there was a lot of interactions in the elevator, which is pretty <laughs> yeah. fun. You just, like, get in the elevator with someone and chat with them, you know, with, like, yeah. yeah, famous athletes or not famous athletes. It's just everybody is yeah. just friends with each other and because we're on the same team. When it's just by accident, you know, like I went into the elevator the day after Helen, the wrestler, won the gold medal first time ever, and I was like, oh, I was starstruck. I was like, oh my gosh, congratulations! You don't know who I am, but you did an awesome job. And she's just like, thank you. So she was really great about it. And there's been a bunch of those kind of things. Yeah, some of the, some of the girls met Nathan Adrian in the elevator and they didn't know who he was. And they, it was we, don't say they. I wasn't there, but I heard. Trying to pull you down with me. (laughs) And they asked him, they saw he had his medal ceremony uniform and they asked him like, oh, did you just come from a competition and he pulls some medals out of his pocket? Uh, so we were actually erging, and this is before our competition, and okay. an erg is the indoor rowing machine, and so the the rowing venue was kind of far from the village, and so we would a lot of times just go down there once, and if we could only get one row in, we'd erg in the afternoon. Well, this one particular afternoon we were erging, and this guy named Michael Phelps walks by, <laughs> and you see all of a sudden one of our teammates whip her head around. <laughs> And he's, he's, yeah, so Amanda Elmore did that. And he's, yeah, to be fair, then we all did, yes, and we tried to play it cool. Uh, But, yeah, but so he, we, yeah, so we saw him there watching us when we turned around. But a few days later, after we finished, we were all at the Today Show set and, um, we were talking to him and he actually said that, you know, he was talking to his coach trying to see if he could, you know, actually do that. And his coach was telling him, no, 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 <laughs> you wouldn't be able it's to, too too it's hard. too hard. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. He was really nice. Everyone is awesome. Yeah. You guys are stronger than Michael Phelps. That's what you're saying. <laughs> you would agree. Okay. So I have to ask you're the Cox. What do you tell these girls when they're rowing? Like, give us an example here. How do you inspire them? Oh my gosh. So I don't actually think I need to inspire them that much. They are pretty inspirational. <laughs> um, I think the biggest, most inspirational thing in rowing is when you can feel the other women in the boat going hard and picking the boat up out of the water. And so for me, my job is just to say like, okay, ready, everyone, we're going to go right now. And then I tell them exactly when to go and exactly how to go. And as soon as all eight do it together, it's like an electric feeling. And then it's just a snowball effect where you can feel that everyone's going. And then it, that is what's motivating. Just to add to that, I think one of my favorite calls that Caitlin makes during the races are, you know, okay, like, you know, pull for the person in front of you and pull for the person behind you. And you can feel the surge right away. It's just that trust in each other and wanting to give your best and all for the person in front of you, behind you. It's a very unified feeling. So do you guys train together? Are you like live in the same place? You guys look like friends. Like, do you spend a lot of time together? How does this work? This is, actually, when you walk out, like. <clears throat> um, so actually, we are pretty close to New York most of the year. We live in Princeton, New Jersey, um, and we don't live with each other. Most of us don't. I'd say maybe a handful live, maybe with a couple of teammates, but most of us live with host families, which is what it sounds like. It's families that have just opened their homes to us rowers. And for some of us, we've lived there for four years. Um, and they're incredibly generous. Yeah. Costin Botters, that's my host family. I'm my own host family. <laughs> Kathy, Mike Coppins, Lauren and Nicole, I love you guys. Dana and Sophie, love you guys. So, uh, Lisa Goldsmith, uh, Love you, and also Lisa Tyndall and Steve Melkier and their kids, Phoebe and Lucy, who are going to be in my wedding this December. Oh my gosh, congratulations. Thank you. I'm glad you brought that up because they are the 
unrecognized yeah. part of yeah. this gold medal. So what happens now for all of you? What's next? Like after the victory tour, what have you guys <laughs> been doing? Victory, like oh how how have you celebrated since coming back? Who have you, like who have you been talking to? And what happens next? Sure, I'll, I'll start it. We'll go yeah, down. Wanna... So we actually got back two days ago, um, and so after this, I'm gonna drive west. Um, um, I'm going to visit family in Colorado and ultimately go back to California for a little bit. I am going to stay in Princeton just shortly, and then I'm going home for my brother's wedding, and we actually have the opportunity to go to the White House later in September, and that I think is really high up on everyone's list of to-dos this fall. Definitely visiting fa friends and family. I'm going back to Princeton briefly to visit a little longer with my host family before I move out. Sad face. Um, and then and then I'm going on to Pittsburgh, spending some time there with family and friends I haven't seen in a while, and then eventually moving to South Carolina and planning a wedding yes. for November. <laughs> Her own wedding. My own wedding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't want you to forget that. <laughs> Don't forget. Um, I'm just going home to spend time with my friends and family. Can't wait to see them. It's been, oh, yeah, in Indiana. I think same thing as everyone, just spending time with my friends and family. Um, something that not everyone realizes is that we're not the only ones that make sacrifices. Our friends and family have to make a lot of sacrifices. We don't get to go to weddings or family reunions or see them as much as either of us would like. So my plan is to hopefully make up for that. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for joining us.